the Tamil language is very important to them. Yeah, important. I think even uh, non-religious, godless people mm -hmm. celebrate Tamil and worship Tamil. So you said you've got, um, you're doing this fashion business and so you yes. know a lot about what is going on in the rest of the world. How do you see uh, the United States, China, these countries? Where do you see India's place in all this? Nowhere less than them, yeah. but we should walk hmm. the talk. Yeah. Like you're doing, every Indian must walk the talk. Hmm. Hmm. I want to be, or simply resigning yourself to calling it a third world country. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. That's blasphemy. <laughs> and, and, and you said in our earlier discussion that production has a lot to do with it. The ability to produce something and yeah. sell it outside India, not just in India. Yeah, we can't have a toddy mindset mm -hmm. because you can't bottle it. Mm -hmm. It has to be had right. then and there. We are in G20, hmm. not because of one government, yeah. successive governments, yeah. and whatever good they could do, that has accumulated hmm. and come to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So we are aware of that. And uh, you were talking about China. I want you to say more. The security of the country, both internal and external, yeah. your opinion on it. I was speaking to some ex-servicemen the other day and I was mentioning to them that security today in the 21st century, it's not good enough just to say, okay, what do our borders look like, right? Because security today has become a holistic thing. You don't necessarily get attacked from the borders. You can get attacked from inside. You can get attacked by cyber weapons. You can get attacked by, uh, you know, use of your media. So in the 21st century, one has to have a global view about security. And that's where I think our government has completely gone and miscalculated. We constantly hear about what is going on on the border. And the fact of the matter is that China has taken 2,000 kilometers of our territory, okay, square kilometers. And frankly, we haven't said anything. The prime minister hasn't said anything. The military has clearly said that they're sitting in our territory. But the prime minister said nobody has come. This sends a very clear message to China. And the message is, we can do whatever we want, and India will not respond, right? And in fact, in some of the conversations that they are having with our military, they're actually making the statement that, look, your prime minister himself has said we are not in your territory. So what is the conversation about? So that's one aspect of it. Yeah, to them, it will look like we are whistling in the dark to allay fear. Yeah. No, and... Looking and, out somewhere no, else. Imagine, imagine if you are the leader, right? And uh, your forces and my forces are negotiating and your forces are coming and saying you're in my territory. And then I say, no, no, but your leader has said we're not. So it destroys the entire negotiation position of yes. India. Right? So that's one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is how conflict has been transformed. And conflict has been transformed because earlier you fought on a border. Now you fight everywhere. Right. So you fight by shutting down power stations. You can fight by attacking the railway system. You can fight by militarily attacking. You can and fight- the oldest trick is to yeah. contaminate water, water. Yeah, so you can, you can do that. So the single most important thing in the 21st century is that a country has internal cohesion. That there's harmony in the country, that people are not fighting, that there's peace in the country, and the country has a vision. The point is not, going to war, right? The point is being in a position where you cannot be attacked. And there's a link between a weak economy, a confused nation without vision, hatred and anger, and the Chinese sitting in our territory. Because they know that we are dealing with internal matters, internal confusion, in, an internal lack of harmony. And so they can just go in and do whatever they want. So that, that's one element of the problem. The other huge element of the problem is what has happened in Ukraine, right? And essentially what the Russians have done in Ukraine is they've said, look, we will not accept that the Ukrainians have a strong relationship with the West. And they've basically told the Ukrainians, if you have a strong relationship with the West, we will alter your geography. And that is the exact same principle that can be applied in India. What the Chinese are saying to us is be careful with what you're doing because we will alter your geography. We will enter Ladakh, we will enter Arunachal. And what I can see is them building a platform for that type 
of an approach. So as an Indian person, I don't want to be somebody who's warmongering, but I would like, I'd like our country to be aware that there are real problems on the border, and those problems on the border are connected to what is going on inside our country. When Indian fights Indian, when the economy doesn't work, when there's joblessness, our external opponents can take advantage of that situation. Yeah, so that's, that's it's broadly... It's an opportune moment yeah. of distracted... Yeah. So one of the things that we've, you know, constantly telling our government is talk about it. If you want to do, don't want to talk through the media, at least talk to the opposition. We understand these things. We might be able to help you, advise you, you know, bounce ideas off us, but they just don't listen. So it's that, it's the approach that, you know, we understand everything. The other aspect of it, which you touched on, is that, frankly, there's no one who can compete with China. I do not believe that on production, on as far as the economics is concerned, I do not believe that the West can take on the Chinese. I believe that India can take on the Chinese. We have the population. We have the that. population, we have the people. What do you need to take on the Chinese? You need a young population. You need large numbers of people. You need a large educated base. Compared to China, our population is younger. Exactly. Right? And if you see the West, right, uh, and, you know, this might be a bit controversial, but they've got too much. They're flabby. They're living in opulence. They uh, live on... They and live, they are outsourced. And they're outsourced, right? Whereas our people, they know what a struggle is. They understand uh, difficulty. So I think, as an Indian person, I see a huge opportunity for India to become like China, the producer of the world, right? And of course, the West has a space, which is high-end manufacturing, high technology, et cetera, et cetera, which they're very good at, they'll dominate. And we should try and challenge them on that. But I do not think they can compete with China on the large-scale manufacturing, yeah. blue-collar work. And I think that's, that's the tragedy, that we are walking on these streets, you walked with us, and all our children are saying we are unemployed, when in fact, we could have huge amounts of employment through our agricultural system.